Hello everyone, welcome back. The headband is not a fashion statement. Basically, I didn't have time to style my hair and it's a bit greasy, so I just put a hairband in it. I've got to get this video done quickly because in about an hour's time, I am dyeing James's hair on his stream. I thought I would get myself ready on camera and I asked you guys for some questions over on my Instagram. So I'm just gonna be answering some of those, having a little catch up because I feel like I've not really done that kind of thing in a while. So let's do it. I don't actually know the last time that I did a Q and A, but I feel like I've not actually sat and chatted with you guys like in depth about stuff for quite a long time. I'll do my makeup while we're speaking, but I won't kind of like mention everything. I will list everything everything that I use down below in the description box. I think Milani might have relaunched their Conceal and Perfect foundation because I swear it didn't used to look like this. I've got the shade 02A, I've got sent this in a PR package. It is very thick and I'm not used to wearing that thick foundations anymore, but we'll see what it's like. So I posted this on my story, which is a lovely picture of me when I had not done anything to my hair after coming out the shower. <laughs> One of the questions that made me laugh was actually somebody said, what the hell had happened to your hair? <laughs> that was just my hair coming out the shower and me not doing anything to it. And that is why I don't wear my hair natural. One of the questions, which is actually part of the reason why I wanted to make this video was, do you have any plans to renovate slash move? So, this might be the last video that I'm actually filming in this room as it is at the moment. We've been having some building work done over the past couple of months and it's nearly done. And as of tomorrow, I'm filming this on a Sunday and the builder said to me on Friday, he was like, oh, on Monday I can help you move some of your furniture downstairs. And then I suddenly thought, shit, I need to film a video because I've not done like a last video in this room. Basically, we had a garage on the house. We never used it for anything really. Like we didn't put our cars in it or anything. It was basically like a lot of people's garages, just full of a bunch of shit that we don't use. And we didn't really need the garage space. So we thought that we would get it converted into a room and that's what we've done. And that is gonna be my new office, which is very, very exciting. But also I'm kind of nervous because the setup of the room is very different to this one. And trying to figure out a background in that room could be a little bit tricky. It's gonna look different to in here. I don't know whether to change it completely and do something completely different or whether people will be, I don't know, that would throw people off and they'll click on my videos and be like, this isn't a regular soap video because it is weird. I find it strange when the YouTubers that I watch change their backgrounds because I'm like, well, it's not the same as what I'm used to, you know? And I'm not very good with change anyway, so I don't know how I'm gonna feel in there. So I'm a little bit nervous, but also very excited. Like it's gonna be fun to have a fresh new space, but I need to get myself a new office chair. I need to get myself a new desk. I need to figure out a few things in there, but yes, this might be the last video that you see me filming here. It might not because it might take me a while to kind of get my background sorted out. But as this is at the moment, this this might be the last of this background that you see. But if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Also, I do apologize if in a sec you can hear James streaming next door. That's another thing that will be good. We will no longer be right next to each other so he can stream when he wants. I can film when I want and it shouldn't. we shouldn't be like interrupting each other by making noise, which is gonna be good. But in terms of moving, not for the moment. I reckon we'll be here for another like good few years. I mean, especially after we've just had work done. And also that frees up an extra space that so if, you know, in the next like five or so years we do have kids and we've got extra room. I mean, obviously you never know what's going to happen and we could decide to move sooner than that, but I reckon I can definitely see us living here for another good few years because we do like it here. It really does feel like home. We've been here for three years already now, which I find so crazy because that's gone so quickly, but yeah, not moving for the moment, but would definitely, I think, want to, well, probably want to in the future just to have a little bit more space. I'm gonna get this one out of the way for all the people that are not fans of Taylor Swift and aren't interested, but a lot of people were asking me, did I get Taylor Swift tickets? Did I get Taylor Swift tickets for my dad? And what are my favorite tracks from Speak Now Taylor's version and what do I think of it? Yes, I did get Taylor Swift tickets. Managed to get tickets in the pre-sale, which is so exciting. And I was actually in Paris on the day that the tickets went on sale. Ellie wanted to get standing tickets. So she managed to get us standing tickets for me, Ellie, uh, one of our other friends and also Ellie's brother. She managed to get those within like five minutes minutes, which I don't know how on earth she did that. And then my brother was trying to get tickets for him, um, his fiance, my dad and me so that we can go as a family because my brother and his fiance are also massive Taylor Swift fans, but I don't think, my brother's definitely never seen her live. I think his fiance has maybe seen her live once or maybe not at all. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. I think she's seen her live before, but my brother has not, my dad has not, though they are both big fans. My dad is a huge fan. And I posted a TikTok about this and to cut a long story short, basically, I stopped my dad from going to see Taylor Swift for many years when I used to go and see her as a kid because I thought that it wasn't cool to go to concerts with your parents. And then after Taylor's last tour, the Reputation tour, I promised my dad, I was like, next time she comes here, I promise you I will go with you. And then obviously we went into lockdown and she didn't come back for years and then her popularity exploded even more. And I was so terrified that we weren't gonna get tickets and that my dad was never gonna get to see her and I was like really <laughs> feeling like a terrible child. But yes, my brother was able to get four tickets for us, which is amazing. So I'm so, so, so excited and I'm so excited 
excited to do. The standing, because I've not done that for a good few years for Taylor, and like being near the front, because obviously, went to see her in Nashville, but our tickets were behind the stage, which, so we didn't get to see any of the, um, you know, the stuff that was going on, on the stage. So I'm very excited to actually see the stage production, because I've still not actually probably seen it. I've seen a couple clips in videos, but even though we were there in Nashville, we didn't see any of that. And then with my family, we are seated, and a lot of people were saying like, oh, which shows are you going to, and where are you sat? I hope you understand, like, for privacy reasons, I'm not particularly keen to tell everyone when we're going and where we're going to be sitting just because I'm going to be there with my family so I mean obviously if you do see me there feel free to come and say hi but I didn't want people to specifically be like searching for our seats if I tell everyone if you get what I mean not that they would but just you know just I want I want it to be as chilled as possible for my family oh and in terms of Speak Now Taylor's version obviously I love it Speak Now is my favorite Taylor Swift album so I was so excited for this one I have to say I mean obviously it takes some getting used to because she doesn't have the same sort of like country twang to her voice but I still still love it and I love the vault tracks as well. My favourites are I Can See You and Timeless. Oh my god, Timeless is such a beautiful song. Potentially is up there with one of my favourite Taylor songs. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I do miss Taylor's country accent, but I love the album. I think it's great. Also, on the day that the tickets went live on the pre-sale, I was in Paris with James for TwitchCon and we were literally like stood by the Eiffel Tower. Everyone was sort of like sitting down getting food and I was there like on my phone trying to get Taylor tickets and I didn't actually manage to get them on that day um, and my brother was able to get some that afternoon but on that actual day my dad could not even try for tickets because he was literally being wheeled into surgery as the tickets went on sale um so yeah it was really nice to for my dad to wake up with my brother telling him that we were able to get Taylor Swift tickets. It was a very stressful day like there was a lot going on like there was a lot going on that day but that put a really nice positive spin on it and my dad was absolutely over the moon so somebody said what is one thing that I could tell my younger self I would tell my younger self that she doesn't need to go to uni and that you if you want to do a creative job you can still do it and you'll still end up doing something that you love and being happy and that you don't have to follow everyone else's path in life I would also love to tell younger self that everything will be okay and life will work itself out and that you will eventually gain some confidence to do the things that you were terrified to do and that different anxiety issues can get better and that yeah just that it will be alright a couple of people saying like how are things with you like how's your mental health how are you doing blah 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 which is very very nice of you to ask how I'm doing I'm doing a lot better now I've got to say um this year has had a lot of ups and downs so far like I touched on with my dad having surgery and stuff he has had a few different health issues uh over the sort of past year and then we found out I think it was back in god i can't actually remember when we found out i think it might have been february or march he's okay now he's doing good he's just had surgery but he did have prostate cancer which was a bit of a shock at the time yeah this year has been a bit up and down there's been quite a lot going on in terms of like my personal life and also my work life i've been really busy with stuff this year like i feel like it's great it's really 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 good to be busy but with work stuff and a lot of stuff going on in my personal life like it's just been a, a lot yeah it was like a lot <laughs> at the time because you obviously hear the word cancer and it sounds absolutely terrifying and no one in my family that I am like close to has had cancer before so for it to be like one of your parents was like shit. I had like a good few weeks and sort of months of like feeling very anxious and obviously like as you would which I think is a completely normal reaction but it was just like the unknown that was so scary about it and I was speaking to my parents about this the other day obviously like I didn't want to speak about it online before now because I didn't know sort of like what was happening with it I didn't know how comfortable my dad would be with that I didn't know if he told everybody that he needed to tell but my dad was saying the other day about how they do fundraising at the Royal Marsden and that's how a lot of their care is so great and they were so great with my dad and I would like to donate the ad revenue from this video to them so if you're watching this video um, and watching the ads then you are helping to donate to um, an amazing cancer charity slash hospital who do some incredible things but yeah I definitely you know this year hasn't all been perfect it may have looked like that on social media and on my youtube videos but there's been some stuff going on behind the scenes but other than that I'm all good obviously like it's also been quite difficult with the building work that's going on in terms of like filming and getting content done so I've not been able to get as much done as usual in terms of like tiktoks and reels and shorts I've, I've been keep it on top of right of my YouTube videos but when I've had sponsored stuff like that obviously takes up a lot of my time and yeah I was chatting with my manager the other day and just saying like let's try and space out the sponsored content a bit more because I feel like I've done quite a lot recently how did we get onto such a tangent I don't even know what I was talking about things are sort of like getting back to normal so I'm good thank you for asking 
how are you? That was the Kaleidos Ecstasy blush, by the way. How pretty is that colour? I think I'm going to use one of these for my highlighter, which is from Stila. They're the Heaven's Dew All Over Glimmers, which I've got to say, look at the box and then look at the size of the product. That is so deceiving. This one is in the shade Lake Havasu. It looks like this. Would you consider becoming a streamer one day? Um, have I considered streaming? Do I think I'll be a streamer one day? Potentially, yes. You know what? Maybe when I have my new setup, I could look into getting a PC and look into potentially streaming because I do actually play Fortnite every day. I used to post on my stories like whenever I would win and stuff, but I stopped doing that because I thought it made me look like a bit of a loser. Um, <laughs> I still play Fortnite pretty much every single day of my life. So I definitely would have something to stream. And also as well, like I could do makeup streams. I could do chatting streams. I could do other games because I used to play like Minecraft and Call of Duty. So maybe I could get back into those. Maybe one day, you know, I will stream. But at the moment, like it just scares me a bit. I feel like on Twitch, there's quite a lot of, um, I don't know, the relationships can sometimes get a little bit blurred and sometimes some sort of like creepy people on there that like think that they're your best mate when they're not but also as well there's a lot of lovely people over there like tons of lovely people james has got so many nice people in his twitch community and there are some super generous kind lovely people on twitch but obviously you do get some not so nice people as well but i feel like because it's live it's a very different dynamic to youtube because on youtube you can just block people and not even like read certain comments but when you're live and all the comments are coming through as you're live i feel like that's a little bit more difficult to deal with and i'm not too sure how well i would do with that but maybe one day we'll see we'll see somebody said give us late 20 year olds some dating advice you know what my best dating advice would be especially if you're in your late 20s is do not settle for less than what you deserve i think a lot of people in their 20s they get the pressure obviously if all of their mates are in relationships or whatever or if the people around them are or like if your family's putting pressure on you oh you need to find a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever they get a lot of pressure and just think i need to be in a relationship and then we'll settle for somebody that isn't like what they want in life somebody that doesn't fully like treat them how they want to be treated or you know you see re red flags there but you ignore them because you think oh I need to be in a relationship just don't settle for less than what you deserve because at the end of the day you want to be happy and you want to have fun with the person that you are going to potentially spend the rest of your life with and I think you know if somebody isn't treating you how you want to be treated and you're not enjoying time spending with them and like you see red flags then there's not really much point wasting your time if you are looking for something long term maybe try joining a club of like something that you're interested in like a local club as in like not a, a nightclub like a either like sports or dance or like like, I don't know, some places have got like board game clubs and stuff. And I know people that have like struggled to meet somebody and then everything will move really quickly and they will suddenly meet that person. They'll think that they're never gonna find anyone, but there are people that will meet the love of their life at the age of like 28 or 29. And within a couple of years, because they know that that person is the one, they will end up getting married and having kids and everything works out really quickly and it works out for them. So don't think that just because you're in your late 20s, you're never gonna find someone because that is absolutely not the case but I totally understand that it is a struggle like I have friends that have been through it and like struggling to meet people and stuff and it is difficult and I think like dating apps can be exhausting or like for example if there's a particular type of music that you like sometimes they do like <laughs> okay my first example is like Taylor Swift club nights but I know that they do them for other artists um if you're into a particular type of music like go to some events where there's going to be other young people there or if you have any friends that have got like a group of friends maybe ask if you can go and join them at the pub if they're like going out somewhere or like going out for dinner just ask if you can tag along and maybe you'll meet somebody through a mutual friend like you have to sort of put yourself out there a bit which I know is really scary I think there's somebody out there for everyone so don't give up on it um but good luck I know that it's stressful do you like and are you good at doing other people's makeup is it something you want to do more I do not like doing other people's makeup if I'm completely honest I've done it a couple of times and I feel like it's not turned out very well I'm so used to my own face and what works for me and like my own eye shape and stuff but I find it quite difficult to do other people's makeup oh you know what I'm gonna use one of these today this is from Stila it's one of their stay all day muted neon liquid eyeliners. I'm gonna try and do like a baby pink eyeliner because I feel like, I don't know, a bit Barbie-ish, isn't it? I've not seen Barbie yet. A lot of people were asking me about that. I am definitely gonna go see it this week and I can't wait. I think it's gonna be great. Oh my God, my lips are so dry. What was the question? It's not really coming out how I want it to. Oh, about doing other people's makeup. Um, I would potentially like to train in the future. However, I was thinking if I then train to do makeup professionally, I feel like then everyone in my life would then start asking me to do their makeup and that would make me really nervous because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> oh my gosh, there was one time where I I did James's mum's makeup. She asked me to do it for an ABRA event and I actually left there and cried because I thought that I'd done a really bad job. And it's, it's strange how you can be really good at makeup on yourself, but doing it on somebody else is entirely different. This is just not working for me. But maybe in the future I'll train, we'll see. Somebody said, do I have a five year plan or am I more of a go with the flow type of person? Kind of a bit of both, if I'm honest. I definitely used to be like the five year plan kind of person, 
but then I got to a certain age and was like, actually, no, that's not what I want right now. You know, like, I used to think that I would want kids. Oh, this is just not working for me. Like, it's really, really dry and it's just dragging and taking off the layer underneath. <laughs> Look at the state of this palette. This one is from Glisten Cosmetics. I'm gonna use the baby pink in this and go over it. I think I've definitely learned growing up that you can't always have a plan. Like, your plan that you have in your head is not always gonna work out in real life. You know, I used to think that by now I would be married with a kid. But then I got to the age that I thought I would have kids and was like, you know what, I'm not ready for kids yet. So I think it's nice to have a plan, but I've also definitely realized in life that you can't like, you can't always plan your life down to a T because that doesn't always happen. Like, I'd love to say that within five years I would like to be married and have kids, but then I probably said that five years ago as well. Like, life doesn't always work out exactly how you want it to, but that is okay. But yeah, I've definitely learned to go with the flow and be a lot more, like, comfortable in doing that, so nice to have a plan, but if it doesn't go to plan, then that's also fine. Someone said, do you worry about being behind your friends like babies in marriage? Because I do. You know what? I feel like at the moment my whole Instagram is just people having babies. Every time I go on Instagram, there is a baby on my feed. So when it comes to my own friend group, everyone is at completely different stages. Um, like for example, one of my friends has just got married, which is really, really exciting. One of my friends is still traveling. Uh, one of my friends has just moved in with their partner. Some of my friends aren't in relationships. Like everyone is at completely different stages of life. And I totally get that it's really easy to compare yourself to other people in their situations, but everyone is on a different path in life. But at the end of the day, it is your life. Everyone's ready for different things at certain times. So if you are not ready, to have kids if you're not ready to get married if you don't want to have kids and you don't want to get married That's absolutely fine. Like at the end of the day Yes, you you want your friends to be involved with you, but it's your life I think as long as you're happy that's the main thing that matters Like if you don't want to do all those things yet, yeah, then that's absolutely fine And if you feel like you're gonna get left behind Like if those are the type of people in your life that are gonna have kids and get married And then you are gonna be left behind and they're gonna like stop talking to you or whatever Then those are not the kind of friends that you want to stay friends with I guess like a savage as that sounds, I think the people that are meant to be in your life for a long time and like forever, they will stay in your life and they will put in the effort to still make time for you even if they're having kids and doing their own thing with their partners or whatever, they will still make time for you and if they're not making time for you then I think it's time to find some new friends. Which also sounds terrifying as well because it's hard to make friends when you're in your 20s and like when you're a little bit older but I think yeah the people that are truly your friends will st stay by you and they won't care like what stage you are in life because at the end of the day everyone's got a different path, everyone wants different things do what makes you happy. We only get one life. Live it to the fullest. Do the things that you want to do and don't feel the pressures of, oh, I should be doing this or I should be having kids. I should be getting married because there's nothing that you should be doing because it's your decision. But I think just you do you and like the older I get, the more I realise that you should really just make decisions in your life that are based on your own happiness um, and not go off what other people are telling you that you should do. Because we're all only here once at the end of the day. Like make the most of it if you can. Any exciting travel plans? Uh, I have a list of places that I want to go in the next couple of years. Let me just get my list up. High on the list, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Thailand, the Philippines, Switzerland and a tour of Italy. Those are the places that I would love to do in the next few years. We will see what happens with that because that's a lot of places on there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more of the world that I want to see actually. A lot. Rare Beauty Worthy and a L'Oreal plumping gloss in Eye Heighten. Oh! It tingles. That's not so good for my sore lips. <laughs> Somebody said, are you attending Roxy's wedding in September? No, we're not. We can't make it. Which I'm so sad about. Um, we've had a holiday planned with my parents for like the past year. And obviously Roxy's wedding was a lot more last minute. And because of everything that's going on with my dad and everything, like this will be the first trip that he will be able to take away. He's been really, really looking forward to this holiday. And we've been really looking forward to this holiday. And we can't rebook it for another time because my parents are away. At basically like the time that we would be to swap the dates for my parents are away then so we can't actually rebook it for a different time so we can't make it which I'm so sad about because I'm sure it'll be absolutely amazing. Somebody asked any vlogs planned. I still need to edit the Sardinia vlog. Me and James went to Sardinia in June and I've just not had a chance to sit down and edit it yet but I will do that at some point. Um, as usual with my vlog channel the vlogs seem to go up like a few months after something's happened so <laughs> maybe before our next holiday who knows. And the last question I'm going to ask it says do you sometimes feel sick of makeup and want to do other types of content? I wouldn't necessarily say sick of makeup. Another question was like does makeup still excite you some stuff honestly like some launches are quite boring aren't they because a lot of stuff has been done already before the things that i get excited about is when i find like a good base product for my skin like a good foundation that like lasts well and looks really beautiful and like i feel like the technology with foundations are getting better where they're getting more like skincare like i get excited by like sparkly things like any kind of sparkly eyeshadows and stuff like that i get so excited about still like a good foily glittery eyeshadow good mascara i get excited about my favorite kind of products like liquid blushes tinted lip 
sticks and stuff. In general, I love to sit down and play with makeup and do like different creative things. Sometimes I lose love for that, but then it seems to kind of like come and go in waves. But then I definitely found anyway that when I was an art student back at school and like when I was doing an art foundation, when I was doing graphic design, the creativity of like having ideas for stuff comes in waves anyway. So I was kind of used to that when I was like studying art and I feel like that definitely translates into makeup as well. But generally no, like as a whole, I do still really enjoy doing makeup. Obviously I have days where I'm not feeling as motivated to sit down and film, but as a whole, Oh, I still love it which I think I'm really lucky to say that because I know that a lot of people kind of have fallen out of love with it and there's not as many makeup creators left that used to be on the platform when I was sort of like starting out. As a whole I'm still enjoying it. I really enjoy filming like TikTok videos and shorts and Instagram reels and things that can do like creative sort of transitions and things and not as much like waffle because I waffle a lot in my YouTube videos. So yeah it sort of comes and goes in like my motivation levels and like how much I'm in love with it but as a whole yeah I would say that I don't really want to do other types of content at the moment because I'm not really sure like what other things I would make content about like makeup is my main passion and it's fun to make stuff that you're passionate about so I can't really think of like what else I would do unless it was kind of like home renovation vlogs those are kind of fun um but oh yeah there will be a vlog at some point of my new office probably um I'm not too sure how much of that but I did get some clips of it like along the building process so maybe I would do a little office decorating vlog soon the only other thing that I could see myself moving into is gaming and actually I love music as well like I could definitely see myself maybe in the future having a podcast about music because I know that I talk about Taylor Swift a lot but I listen to a lot of other artists like I've got quite a varied music taste um, and a lot of the time like especially pop music like when a new pop album comes out you can bet that I'll be listening to that album and me and Ellie talk about that quite a lot so maybe maybe me and Ellie should start a uh, music podcast but I feel like everyone's doing a podcast at the moment so maybe we won't at the moment but I don't know who knows who knows? Right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go bleach James's hair. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for sitting with me and chatting and catching up. Um, it's been a bit of a mixed bag in 2023 so far, but I'm hoping that the second half of it will go a lot better. And I hope that you guys are doing all right because I know that it's not been the best for a lot of people, but hopefully it will pick up and we will have a good year. So I hope that you guys are doing good. If you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up. I know it's a bit different to usual, just me having a little chat, but thank you for asking how I'm doing. Thank you for catching up with me and I will see you in my next video. Bye.